We're good to go. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's Live Art Mini. My name is Morgan Gattermeyer, and on the left of me is Stephen Smith. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Live Art Mini. Happy Thursday to everyone out there. We've got a special, it's our last week of American Artist Month here for Live Art Mini. So we picked out a current artist. So in the past few weeks, we look at historical artists. People have been deceased, they're well known, they're in museums. But this artist that we're looking at this week is currently making paintings. He's out there in the world and doing things. So that's kind of awesome. Yeah, very cool. Would you like to introduce our artist for the week? I sure would. Our artist this week is Kehendi Wiley. And he is a very talented artist. And um, everything that he has done, everything that I have seen, um, in a way, m tells its own story. Each piece, I feel, tells a story, yep. which is really cool. Yep, and we're going to be sharing some examples of Kehinde's work with you. He's a painter. He's an oil painter, does very large-scale portraits with some decorative backgrounds. So Morgan's taken inspiration from his work to do a portrait of her friend, which we'll be watching and kind of watching as Morgan paints along later. But we're going to take a quick break and say a big thank you to Sherry Armstead and everyone at Symmetry Gallery and Boutique. They are a season sponsor for Live Art Mini. So thank you for making this happen. So if you need something special, they have one-of-a-kind handmade artwork, and they're located on Sims Road out in Fairfield. So go check out Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. We're going to have a special message from uh, Sherry and her daughter Debbie a little bit later during Live Art Mini with a, a special that you can get if you go and mention that you've been watching us here on Facebook. All right, so Morgan, should we get into it? Should we look at uh, some examples of Kehinde's work? Yes, please. Cool. So I worked with Morgan earlier this week, and then she went and did some Googling and did some research on Kehinde Wiley and picked out some of her favorite paintings that she found. So let's start with a, a piece that has some local connections. I'm going to fade into this portrait right here. So Morgan, what struck you about this painting? What struck me about this painting is the the person in the painting is wearing a Bengals jersey, mm -hmm. which felt very Cincinnati-esque to me. Yeah. And uh, I felt a connection there since I am from Cincinnati, Ohio. That's correct. And then this is going to be one of uh, Kehinde's earlier works. So you, you can see like there's a gentleman wearing the, the Bengals jersey. Uh, but what Kehinde does is sets up you know, contemporary African-American individuals, you know, wearing something that they wear currently, but he puts them in poses that are taken from historical pieces. We're thinking like the 1800s, 1700s, uh, portraits of royalty, portraits of kings and ki queens, and then he's using those poses as well. I believe this is um, from a fable or like a historical story. Um, it's kind of a darker piece. If you look at the details there, you can see there's two eyeballs on a plate. Yes. So, yeah. so those would represent the the eyeballs of the individual holding the plate there, and I can't tell you the actual, the biblical or historical reference of that piece, but I just wanted to point out how he's using these historical paintings, but then juxtaposing contemporary figures into that scene. And I'm going to pull up one that I chose to show a clear example of that. So on the left there is a famous painting of Napoleon Bonaparte, so a very historical uh, piece that was done, an oil painting, and on the right is Kehinde's take on that. So he's got the current figure still riding the horse and taking the exact pose and some of the background from those uh, famous historical pieces and doing a play on that. I'll pull up another example of a side-by-side. -side. And on the right there is a portrait of King Henry. I believe it's King Henry the fourth. Could be the third, could be the fifth. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that one. But this is a classical painting. And then on the left side is Kehinde Wiley's piece. So he took that current figure. He's got kind of the similar pose going on. But also he's added this regal background to it. So he's got a very decorative floral aspect that's dominant in the backgrounds of his pieces. And uh, if you see them in person, they're amazing. I'm going to pull up one of my other picks that also has a local connection. So if you're familiar with the 21C Museum and 
in a um, hotel down in Cincinnati. They have this piece as you walk into their main gallery right behind the, the check-in for the motel or the hotel when you get in there. So this is quite a large piece. I would guess it's probably like eight feet high Ooh. by about, um, I'd say, roughly 14 feet wide. So wow. it's a very dominating piece. And it's awesome to see these in person because the amount of detail, the realism that Kahinde gets out of his portraits are amazing, as well as the amount of detail and the decorative backgrounds with the flowers. Speaking of the flowers, that's something that um, Wiley does put in a lot of his paintings in the background, is he does a lot of floral backgrounds, which make the piece feel a little bit more soothing, a little bit more different places to look and things to see, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and I like it a lot because it is a play on like those famous historical paintings of kings and queens because there's like a, a royal aspect to these decorative backgrounds and like the yeah, floral definitely. the floral designs used there it's just very dominating and like I said it's, it's peaceful it's pleasing to the eye I know a lot of contemporary art is made for uh, commentary or to have purpose and sometimes can be raw and rough but it's awesome to see like this piece and the amount of talent that he has doing that realism for sure, for sure. All right, so I'm going to pull up one more piece that you picked. We're going to save some for later and kind of cut in and out of, as you work on your portrait of Brennan. Okay. Um, so this was another piece that I chose, and the reason I chose it was I thought it was cool that Wiley had done a painting with somebody wearing a Nike shirt, um, taking, you know, what this picture may have started as and put his own twist on it. Um and I just thought it was it was a cool picture. I thought it was a neat one to kind of show. And, and again, there's flowers in the background. And I just thought it was pretty neat. All right. Very cool. Yeah, you made some great choices. I'm glad, glad for the amount of effort that you put in, like, researching Kahinde and looking up all of his artwork. So I am just jumping on my phone here, too. So Kim's out of the office as of right now. We've got a special outing where they're going to a, a mosaic dedication with some of the artists from the studio. So I just pulled up Facebook on my phone to keep track of anyone out there. If you'd like to give us a shout out, say hello. I know that Jean Sparks is watching right now. So hello, Jean. Hello, Jean. And hello to all of you out there. So if you have any questions, comments, or if you just want to give your own comments about Kehinde Wiley's work, feel free to do that and I'll keep tabs on it. But let's go to the creativity camera and you can see what Morgan's been preparing for you. Can I say one more thing before we switch? Yes, ma'am. The most challenging part of this whole thing for preparation was getting Kehinde Wiley down, the name itself. Yep. And what and you've, you've conquered, you've done a <laughs> yes. great job with it. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to hand off the mic. All right, pass the mic, and let's go to the creativity camera, and you can see what Morgan's prepared. So we're looking straight down on top of Brennan's portrait here, Morgan. If you'd like to give some background on who you chose, why you chose, and then just some details of how you got the image onto your paper. Sure. So this is my friend, Brennan, and um, we didn't really talk on this, but what Kahende did, does, is he takes paintings that are well known and then he'll put African Americans in the painting to show like you know equalism and um, so what I thought would be really neat is to kind of do the same but instead of the same approach that Kahinde had was because I work at Inside Out, which is a place for individuals with disabilities, is why not choose somebody that I know who has a disability and do the same sort of thing. So I chose my friend Brennan. He is completely blind. This is the picture that I chose from my phone. And then we scanned it onto a flash drive and then used a projector to make it bigger so that I could get it onto our piece of watercolor paper. And then 
Yep, so just to jump in there, projecting and tracing is something that's commonly used in the art world today. I'm not sure if Kahinde does in his pieces, but if we want to get the most realistic image we can, like using that little tool to help to project and get that on there is, is very useful. Yes, and then um, going to, again, back to how he had, um, Kahende does a lot of things with florals. I decided to follow that route as well. And this is a template that I saw and really liked. So I decided to use two of the flowers from this. And I'm also going to stick with the same coloring scheme, which is, as you can see, my background here is yellow. And we're going to go in with some more vibrant colors for the flowers to really make them pop. Very good. And I was going to say, this is one of the first times that you've used multiple sources to create a piece. Yes. So like thinking outside the box, a lot of the times if we're looking up imagery online or from an iPad, we'll just find like a landscape or uh, an animal that we want to paint or draw. Mm -hmm. But for this one, you had your subject in Brennan and also found like the separate pattern in the flowers and kind of combined them all together into your own original piece. Yes. Yes. And I'm very, very proud of what I've done thus far. And I can't wait to see it when it is finished. Very cool. So let's get some painting going. So we can maybe start with the flowers in the background. Then after our, our mid live art mini break, we can tackle some skin tones because those are always uh, a challenge. And we'll show people which colors you need to mix together to make some skin tones for a realistic take. All right. And then Morgan's pre-mix, as you can see off to your left there, you got a range of colors in watercolors. And we did use the two watercolors this time. So these squeeze out just like acrylic paints or oil paints, and then you would thin them down one-to-one -one ratio with some water. And well, thin them down some more too if you want like a lighter, more transparent tone. Can I give a quick shout out? Oh yeah, give a shout out. I want to say hi to my mom. Um, I hope you're having a great day at work. I know I am. And uh, can't wait to see you when you get home from work later. And I love you. Very good. So I am using a very small see that or not. Mm -hmm. As they move it a little bit forward. There you go. Um, I'm using a very small detail brush to get into my smaller petals. It also helps with a little, it gives me more control over where I'm painting so that it doesn't go all over the place. Yep, some general watercolor tips as Morgan's working. So the watercolor brushes are specifically designed to capture a lot of moisture. That way, once you dip your brush in, you can kind of paint for you know, a few square inches before you actually run out of paint on your brush. So it's easy to get going and spread it around. But like Morgan said, if you're doing details, the smaller the brush, the better, because that water does have a mind of its own sometimes. It tends to travel all around especially if there's wet areas around and on the outside of where you're painting, because if you kind of touch it to another wet area, those colors and pigments just kind of spread themselves. And then when you're switching from one color to, a de to another, depending on what the color is, if you're going from a yellow to an orange, you don't have to necessarily rinse off the brush, but since I'm going from a purple to orange, that would make a very interesting color if I didn't rinse it out. So yep. start with a clean brush. So think about that color wheel. When colors that are across from each other on the color wheel get together, they tend to make a neutral color, like a brown or dull tone. A 
bit more orange on the brush than I thought I had. So I didn't have to re-dip into the orange to cover this whole flower. I was say one dip got that whole flower done for you. <laughs> yep. And I dip, you dip, we dip. <laughs> <laughs> Just do the dip. All right, maybe one more flower there and then we'll pause to hear a quick message from Sherry and Debbie over at Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. And then when we get back from that, we can look at some more of Kehinde's portraits and then tackle some skin tones. Sounds great. Get this flower over here in the, on the edge. And that's something else that's really neat about doing a watercolor or just a, a painting in general with shapes like flowers is when you're using them for the background you know you don't always have to have the full flower on the canvas mm -hmm. yep i was taught in art school that it's good to have things going off the edge because it kind of extends the reality of what's being painted so you're kind of telling the viewer that you know the flowers could be going on off to the side off the edge and then cropping them on the edge as well just kind of interacts with the sides of the piece yeah makes it more interesting so there's not like this built-in framing or cropping of how you're putting it together Sounds good. Shall we go to a quick little message here? Yes. All right, let's do it. So I'm going to fade over into a little message from Sherry and Debbie from Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. I'm Sherry. I'm here with Debbie at Symmetry. And I just wanted to take a minute to say how happy I am to sponsor an organization that provides an opportunity in studio environment for artists with disabilities to produce market, exhibit, and sell their work, and receive an income. Fantastic. And we here at Symmetry invite you to come shop with us and visit us at our store at 1000 Sims Road. Mention that you've watched this live today and you'll receive 10% off your next purchase. I look forward to seeing you. See you soon. All right. Thank you, Sherry and Debbie. So if you mentioned you've been watching Live Art Mini, you get a nice little discount over there at Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. And Morgan's going to continue to work on her flowers in the background. But we're going to show you some more of Kehinde's pieces as well. So here, I always like to get a portrait of the actual artist. So you connect a face to the actual painter or artist. So this is Mr. Kehinde Wiley. And Morgan, do you remember where he grew up, where he was born? New Las Vegas. Las Cl Vegas. Close. L.A. LA Los, LA, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, not too far from each other, but yes, he was, he was born and raised in Los Angeles and he went to art school in New York city. So like, that's where the New York two of like the most major cities in the country there. And then let me pull up another picture that everyone should recognize. So he was actually commissioned to do the presidential portrait of Barack Obama because every, every president that sits in office, has a portrait done that sits in the Hall of Presidents. So he was selected to do Barack Obama's portrait. And I'm going to go back to some other pieces that Morgan selected. You got some fans calling in? <laughs> Sorry about that. You're good. Morgan's phone's just going off. I think maybe people are watching, just trying to give you a shout out. Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> I didn't know that number though. Okay, so here's a, a portrait that you selected. If you'd like to tell everyone like why you're drawn to the ones that you chose. Yeah, so I really liked this picture because sort of like the same thing that I did with my paint, I'm doing with my painting, is I really like how there's like a softer background with the florals and then the image of the girl who's wearing a multicolored shirt and the colors in the shirt are popping and I love how the colors work well together and that you can look and see something different in the painting and I just thought it was very cool very cool yeah and then I like this one too because the shirt reminds me of the artist Piet Mondrian who did a lot of geometric abstraction with red blue and yellow and white and black 
So I'm not sure if that's a direct shout out to Piet Mondrian or inspired by him, but that was my take on it. Here's another one that he chose. I liked this one. I liked the colors that he chose for the background. I like how the purples and the teal mm -hmm. work very well together, and there's a little bit of black in there. Um, I thought it just was a very, it was soothing to the eye, and I really enjoyed that. I really liked that pick. That pick. Yep, I like this one too. And what's great about these, as we're looking at them, is that all the subjects and the portraits are kind of just like staring out at the viewer. So they're, yeah. they're being bold, they're being empowered. And I believe we have one more. I think we showed this a little bit earlier. I'll pop this one in here too. But you said you felt found that this one is a soothing and calming background. Yes. And you're drawn to the Nike logo. Yes. <laughs> Very good. So once again, so what we're looking at is Kahinde Wiley's portraits here, and basically reframing you know, contemporary African Americans, putting them in an empowered um, and justified way, taking poses from classic and historical paintings of kings and queens, and Morgan was inspired to put her friend Brennan in a similar manner, highlighting specifically individuals with disabilities and putting them in a powerful front gaze looking at the viewer. Yes. All right, shall we tackle some skin tones? Let's do it. All right. So to get some neutral and more natural colors, what you do is mix a few different colors together. And if we're doing skin tones, really we're looking at mixing yellow, red, and blue, which everyone knows is the primary colors. Yes. But also adding either like whites, browns, or blacks, basing on ethnicity and like the, the tone of the skin that we're trying to shoot for. So let's get Brennan's portrait out. That way we have something to judge by and look at. I'm gonna pass the mic here as I start to squeeze out some paint. Alrighty. Twist a lot. <laughs> let's do the twist. All right, so I'm gonna squeeze out a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, and then just a tiny touch of blue. And it seems weird to add blue, but that's going to neutralize and dull down the yellow-red mixture. Because those are the very bright colors. Yep. So, so your, your yellow and red are going to obviously be in orange when you mix those two together. Blue is across the color wheel from orange, so it's going to neutralize it just a little bit and dull it down. But not to the extent of making it too dull. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to see it. So That's true. Yeah. And on Live Art Mini, you can do both. That's right. So talk your way through it. I always try to logisticize things as well. So if it, if it even helps you to kind of put it together in your head, think about like your veins. Some are blue, some are red. So adding a little touch of that blue in there makes it almost as if you're looking through transparent skin to some degree. It's so. an interesting approach on that. Never, you know, it, something I've personally I've never thought of, but it makes sense. Maybe it's just me. I'm just looking at my arm. I see some blue veins. You got one too. I do. Yeah. I do. I have many. <laughs> so I'm just going to start by mixing the straight up watercolor pigment off to the side before adding any water, because you can get your color correct before you thin it out and make it watercolor. We are going to need some white. That tube looks empty. That does look empty. <laughs> yeah, most people don't realize they do make white watercolor. Sometimes you can find it in the trays. You can also buy it in the tubes. Sometimes it plays hide and seek. Yeah. I guess we should have picked that out before we started. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to I say we're going to do a punt. A we punt? Change of plan. So I found some peach. Okay. So since Brennan is Caucasian, we'll just go with a peach instead of a white to lighten it up. I found me some, Steven. You got a picture you like? Very good. We got Melissa sitting across from us. Melissa Talley's in the house today. Melissa, Melissa, anyone you want to say hi to? Um, 
Miss Vicky. Miss Vicky. Vicky Lynn, if you're watching out there, Melissa says hello. All right, so we lightened up our skin tone just a little bit. I think that's good. Yeah. I mean, you can see, is it showing? Okay. Yep. The, it's on the, the color on the edge here and the color, you got me. Oh, gotcha. um, inside was uh, slightly, the, the color on the outside was slightly darker than the color that was on the inside. So. Yep. So this is kind of like a medium tan. And what I'm going to do, I always. My own term is called piggyback on the colors. So we're going to take this base color, we're going to put some into the little cup on either side and make a light and a dark version of that. That way, if you're going for realism, you can start to add some shading. Your light version could be for highlights. The color we mix could be what was called like the base skin color and then make a dark for the shadows. And I'm also just going to pull some colors in from your other tray just to expedite the process. It's a fancy way of saying let's speed it up. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so add in the cool tone for the shadow. So you could do either like a blue or a violet for that. Okay. So thinking about the temperature of the color wheel. Obviously, yellows, reds, oranges, we think of hot colors, but then we got blue, violet, and some cool greens that could lend themselves to cool colors and shadows. Because it's cooler in the shade. All right, you want to start from there and maybe use that for the darker parts around his chin, up to the side, the right side of his face looks like when this picture was taken the light source was coming in from the left side so you got the lighter areas over here the darker on that side and I will search out that white watercolor tube to see if we can get some tints going on all right ready to do it to it let's do it all right like we did with the purple, do we? Say it again. The, so for the purple that we used, we didn't have any tubes of purple. Correct. We had a liquid. Do we have any white liquid? Nope, no white liquid. But once again, we can punt again and add a touch of acrylic white to it. As long as we get enough moisture content to thin down. You can use acrylic for watercolor. It's not archival. It's not recommended by the experts. And you learn something new every day. If you're lucky. <laughs> All right, we are, it is almost 1.30. Time flies when you're painting a watercolor. Yeah, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so let's switch back into our other camera here and say our goodbyes for the day. So thank you all for joining us. As always, our live art minis will be loaded up onto our YouTube page. So you can always go and check that out. And then next month, it's the last week of July. So that means it's a new theme in August and it's gonna be the dog days of summer. So we haven't had anything set in stone yet, but we're thinking we can make some dog dishes, water bowls, food dishes, maybe some little like doggy scarves. But basically a pet themed month of making some artwork here in the studio so stay tuned for facebook so we'll let you know when that's going to take place and you can also go check out our online store by going to our website www.insideoutstudioart.com you can follow the links to our online store you can find some of morgan's artwork you can find everyone's artwork here and then support the artists and any parting words for everyone out there today morgan 
have a joke. Let's hear it. What did the corn say when it got embarrassed? I don't know. Aw, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Puns are the best. It says, it's a, have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Live Art Mini. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.